Hey folks, Joseph Sabora here. I'm back, ready to do a brand new movie review. It's been a while since I've done one, all the way back in April. Yep, which was only two. Yeah, one was the Super Mario Brothers movie. Yes, which respects its source material. Definitely did justice to it, along with its characters, its story, and so on. Already made over a billion worldwide at the box office, and just recently <laughs> is available on digital this week. So now you get a chance to watch it anytime. But hopefully it will get a 4K along with the Blu-ray and DVD available, even with the digital codes included, sometime soon. But I hope it doesn't take too long, because we really want to get these right away. And I sure want to have this in my collection, my physical media collection. And yes, I did review the 1993 live-action Abomination with Bob Hoskins, John Leguizamo, Dennis Hopper, and indeed, Samantha Mathis, Fisher Stevens, and more. Which is a terrible movie to stay away, but if you love it, that's fine. It's your choice. But I respect everyone's opinion and all, but it still stinks even 30 years later. Yeah, and I'm sure that film will probably end up getting a Blu-ray in North America, because they already got one in Germany. <laughs> yeah, go we'll figure. But that depends on what Disney thinks about it. <laughs> or maybe they'll just give it the Kino Lober. They probably will. I wouldn't be surprised. Maybe Milk Creek. <laughs> I don't care. Because I'm not going to waste my time. And of course, speaking of which, <laughs> I am wearing my brand new Super Mario Brothers t-shirt right here. <laughs> yeah, you can see the rest of the entire cast. You got Mario along with Luigi, Princess Peach, Toad, uh, Yoshi, Donkey Kong, the Goombas, the Turtles, and Bowser. Yeah, you name it. <laughs> All right there. And I got this at JCPenney, another birthday gift. <laughs> I mean, I know lately I've been wearing some Mario shirts, uh, starting with Bowser and the other Mario shirt that I didn't show. It's already in the dirty clothes. Yeah, but, but I have been getting some more. <laughs> so now, you sh now it really shows that I really love Mario. Yeah, and I know they'll get some more games coming around, even with the Nintendo Switch, for sure. Especially since they already released uh, The Legend of Zelda. Yeah, a brand new game. Okay. <laughs> yeah, last week. Anyway, I've been concentrating on all my videos that I was capturing, you know, all these VHS tapes and DVD-R collections that I have all the way through my closets and so on. So yes, I was using my HDMI converter as well as my generic brand of a 4K HDMI 2.0B video capture device. Yeah, the capture card. Using OBS Studio just hooking them all up and just capturing some more videos that I have, including my Select TV material that's coming from my dad's tapes, which I had them the whole time. Yeah, only half of his tapes, not all of them. And um, all of my tapes, you know, especially when I was still capturing episodes of At the Movies and Eber and Roper episodes which I know I found recently at UCLA Library Newscape and I've been posting it on BitChute and I'm even trying to add some new ones uh, even though it's already uploaded already I'm trying to stitch in the intros from my recordings with the commercials intact that sort of thing so yeah I've been pretty busy lately 
and even with all the other commercial breaks that I posted online, you know, who, yeah, you know, that I found on my spleen, and I just you know, posted on YouTube, and of course, BitChute as well. Just trying to keep up the pace. So that's why, even with my birthday coming around, you know, before and after, and having to deal with um, my one of my family's relatives' birthdays too, and all this other stuff. You know, I mean, I've been so busy, I just haven't had time. So you know how it is. But it's great that I'm finally get to do a movie review after all this time. Uh, I'm going to be reviewing a movie that I saw back in April, but I didn't have a chance to review it, but now I am, because it's now going to be released next week on physical media, as well as um, digital, too, and it's also going to be on the new Max, from primarily HBO Max, and yes, it's the sequel to the original Shazam! that came out four years ago simply called Shazam! Fairy of the Gods. This time Billy Batson, his adult self, aka Shazam, is teaming up with the rest of his foster siblings to save the world and to fight against the daughters of Atlas, who are both played by Helen Murren and Lucy Liu. They're about to steal the staff, which created their powers, so they become adults, you know, wearing all their suits, and they have all their special powers, and they get to save the entire in town of Philadelphia from total destruction going around. Yes. Since this is part of the DCEU, which means that we're going to be able to see some surprise cameos from all the other DC superheroes. Plus, there's going to be tons of jokes here and there. A lot of punchlines and all that. Because it is indeed a comedy. But it is a superhero film too. And also, tons of action here and there. And, but an entire story that leads to it. So that's what you're going to get. <laughs> Unfortunately, because even though this movie had been having numerous delays coming around, like they were supposed to release this last year, like during um, December. Yeah, but I guess it was due to the competition with Avatar, The Way of Water, and, and all these other films that were coming out too. Uh, in fact, they were going to release it in November 4th of, of 2022, but then suddenly, uh, before that, it was going to be April 1st of 2022, and then later they were going to release it uh, you know, just after my, my, my sister's birthday. <laughs> yeah, because her birthday's on, which is also my father's birthday too, you know, June 1st. So it was going to be released on June 2nd, but that would be for uh, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. So that would be a, a tough uh, competition. And it's also because of the pandemic as we speak, as they continue to go on with it. So they decided to push it straight to March 17 of this year. Um, so that way they can avoid all the other competitions with other films coming around. But I guess because, you know, with so many movies that were coming out uh, during March, you know, like, you know, like John Wick 4 was coming out too. And we're, and already they're just getting ready for the Super Mario Brothers movie that was coming out in April. And already Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania was going pretty strong. Yeah, and sadly, this movie could have done so well. I mean, it only made 133 million worldwide against its production budget of 110 and 125. And yes, it got mixed reviews from critics, who are obviously still on the brain of the Batman, which is overrated, 
I'm sorry, I'm tired of that movie, I really am. And I don't give a crap if this gets a sequel or anything, I'm not going to bother to watch that. I know we're going to get the new, um, The Flash with the original Batman, as we know, um, Michael Keaton. <laughs> yeah, from the 1989, as well as the 1992 film, as we all know. So I can't wait for that, because I waited that long for this. Let's see how this one will turn out. <laughs> okay. Well, back to that. But, it's been so long since I've seen the original Shazam that came out in 2019, or 2019. And I have it on Blu-ray, of course. And it's always nice to see a great actor like Zachary Levy, you know, from Chuck. And... He was also in the movie Tangled to provide the role of uh, Bally Batson and Shazam and, you know, just having fun, you know, and now becoming an adult and trying to learn how to do all of his moves and all that stuff and throwing in some punchlines and also trying to defeat against uh, the villain Thaddeus uh, Savania, who, of course, was played by... Uh, Mark Strong, yeah, <laughs> it's been so long since I've seen it, and, and then of course it has a bit of a nod to the movie Big, with Tom Hanks, <laughs> right there, so I, I knew exactly what I went for, and now that they finally got a sequel after all this time, where he now gets to team up with his foster siblings, and now they all become, you know, Shazams, <laughs> They become superheroes. They just go around saving the world, you know, and also be able to stop these bad guys around from total destruction in Philadelphia. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but anyway, I do respect everyone's opinions, even critics. Okay, I'm not going to give them a hard time and all that. We all know how this goes, because then it's going to be a problem. I've said, said this before, and I'll say this again. Okay? You know, I know they can be this way. I know they're full of themselves, and I know they're just hyping up for what they can achieve. And I know they're trying to make people, you know, go out and see whatever they want to see. But everybody has their own choices to whatever they want to watch, so let them do it, okay? Not everything has to be a drama these days, you know, a melodrama. We want to have fun. You know, we want to have a comedy. We want to have an action movie. We want to have a superhero film. We want to have anything. We want to have an animated film or a Japanese anime or, or any other kinds of genres that we, that we can face. Okay? We want to live, damn it. <laughs> That's why we want to have fun. Anyway. <laughs> But enough of that. Um, let's get right to it. It stars Zachary Levy, Jack Dylan Gracier, Rachel Zegler, Ross Butler, DJ uh, Patrona, Grace Caroline Curry, Megan Good, Lucy Liu, Devon Hansu, that's how it's pronounced, Helen Murren, uh, with Marta Millens, Cooper Andrews, and some surprises right here for cameos. We got Gail Godot uh, joining in with um, Jennifer Holland, Steve Aguirre, and Mark Strong. Also, Dietrich Bader. It's written by Henry Gaiden and Chris Morgan, you know, based on the characters by DC, including Shazam. And it's directed by David F. Sandberg, who also directed the original. And of course, he had directed Lights Out and Annabelle Creation. Yeah. The movie began said two years ago when Shazam, along with his foster siblings, Shazamis, as we call, 
had defeated the villain Thaddeus Savannah, who's played by Mark Strong, by not only stealing the wizard's staff to take all of their powers away, but also creates a huge chaos in their hometown, Philadelphia. And as we all know, Shazam was known as Billy Batson, who's played by Zachary Levy and Asher Angel, who is the champion of the ancient wizard who possesses the wisdom of Solomon, the strength of Hercules, the stamina of Atlas, the power of Zeus, the courage of Achilles, and the speed of Mercury. <laughs> but it can also be, you know, a smart aleck and all that stuff. <laughs> Throwing in some jokes here and there and so on and so forth. <laughs> so he's joined in with his physical disabled foster brother, Freddy. Yeah, Frederick Friedman, played by Jack Dylan Gracier and Adam Brody. Along with his younger foster brother, who's a, obsessed with video games, named Eugene Cho, played by Ross Butler and Ann Chen. His older foster brother, who is shy, sensitive, and openly gay, named Pedro Pena, played by DJ Catrona and Jovan Amon. His mature and academic-driven older foster sister, Mary Bronfield, played by Grace Caroline Curry, who's now playing her adult self, too, as a replacement to Michelle Bolf in the first movie. And her and Billy's um, good-natured younger foster sister, Darla Dudley, played by Megan Good and Faith Herman. Of course, very smart and intelligent, and she loves unicorns as well as Skittles. <laughs> but what gave him the powers was indeed the last surviving member of the Council of Wizards, a wizard named Shazam, played by Jaman Hansu. Yes. So now the story begins where the two evil daughters of the Titan Atlas, Hesperia and Calypso, both played by Helen Mirren and Lucy Liu, have broken into the Acropolis Museum in Athen, Greece, to steal the wizard's broken staff and and begin to to turn everyone into stone. They took it to the wizard who has been imprisoned in the God's realms and forced him to repair the staff and reactivate its powers. But he refused. So, of course, they tortured him and and if, and if somehow they made a deal with him. And that's what happened. So, meanwhile, in Philadelphia, Billy Batson and his shenamis of foster siblings are continuing to, to do their superhero powers and, and other stuff. By saving many people from this collapse, Benjamin Franklin Bridge, yeah, where there was a whole bunch of cars, trucks, big rigs, school buses around, and even pedestrians, and they're already ready to fall all the way down into the river. And that's when Shazam finally showed up while the song holding out from a hero. Holding Out for a Hero by Bonnie Tyler is playing, yet the same song that's been played in many movies, even the Super Mario Bros. movie recently. <laughs> and he just says, Oh, shut up! You actually play a song while, while in total destruction while I'm here? <laughs> or so, sort of like that. I, I mean, I probably got the line of dialogue wrong, but you get the idea. So Shazam and the rest of the Shazamis had saved everyone from this entire total destruction of the bridge that was collapsing and yeah they had to move all the cars, trucks, school buses and everyone around onto the other corner and then they had to repair the entire bridge all all back to its normal pace you know using their own superpowers and everything yeah right there afterwards the group had, had suddenly been drifting apart at home as they suddenly grew up and have their own personal interests in their lives. 
specifically Mary because now she's getting ready for college while her entire secret life as a superhero had prevented her from that. But Billy is being worried that she that he's going to be kicked out of the Basquez family when he ages out of the foster system. And that kind of led to a dream where the wizard had warned Billy about the daughters prompting the Shanamis to begin researching for them and be able to not only steal the entire staff but also begin to steal all of the powers. So now they'll be under control and they're going to be able to create their diabolical plan was to turn the entire Philadelphia into the tree of life. Yes. To make matters worse, uh, Freddie Freeman, while being bullied at school, had fell in love with the new girl named Anne, who's played by Rachel Zeckler, who turns out to be the youngest daughter of Atlas, named Anfra. So, even though <laughs> Freddie eventually had his own secrets, too. But then, all of a sudden, um, the teacher who was played by uh, Dagwich Bader who was under the powers when of Hesperia and Calypso specifically Calypso because she has a power to to actually um, speak their minds you know through their ears and that's when they're under control and she and he committed suicide so now both Hesperia and Calypso had kidnapped Freddy and both uh, Shaz and Shazam along with the Shanamis were about to save him only that now Hesperia and Calypso had turned the entire town into a huge dome so they're trapped uh, Antra was about to um, block the, the two uh, where she has her own power to actually uh, yeah, cross paths, you know, with all these buildings around, you know, trying to make them into like a maze here and there so they can escape. But it was too late. Yeah, so now... So Freddy is already being... Uh, <clears throat> so Billy and Shazami had attempted to save Freddy but with the daughters kidnapping him in place at the indestructible dome around the city, trapping everyone inside as we speak. As I mentioned already, Freddy is being imprisoned with the wizard in the gods' realms. So now the daughters have revealed that they want a revenge against against the wizard for killing their father, yeah, Thaddeus. So meanwhile, the Shanamis had entered the Rock of Eternity, where they encountered a sentient pen named Steve, which they used to draft a letter to Asperia as a negotiation to free Freddy. So Billy and Asperia had met at a local restaurant to talk about their entire meeting to see what they can do. But then suddenly she and Calypso had soon fought against the Shanamis, the Shazamis, and then all of a sudden Pedro had lost his powers during the fight, just like how Freddy lost his, and also of Half of his siblings had lost their powers too, or they tend to gain this as they could. And that's when Hesperia easily breaks out and steals the golden apple, which is the seed of the tree of life. That's exactly their diabolical plan that they're about to do, and that's when they turn. They're about to use the, the wizard staff, create the power by planting the golden apple into the stadium and that's where it grew this entire giant tree of life and that's where it reveals all these mythical creatures appearing and that's where it leads to total destruction around. With Freddy and Wizard attempt to escape the gods realms with Antra's help just as Hesperia returns with the apple the daughters argue with Hesperia and Antra that they wanted to use the apple to revive the realm. While Calypso reaches 
the planet on Earth to destroy it. So Freddy tries to steal the apple for sure, and so on. And yes, it becomes a whole entire destruction and everything going around. And now Shazam is ready to stop him. But then suddenly Calypso had revealed the dragon, so she's flying around. Who stole the? Who of course stole the the wizard staff and ready to shoot, ready to attack uh, Shazam and, and the rest of them. And also revealing all the rest of the creatures that I just mentioned already. And now it's up to Shazam to stop them. Since they already had took in their powers already. And hoping that they'll be able to retrieve their powers for sure. And then who knows what's going to happen next. So let's leave it at that. Um, and yes, there are some there is a surprise cameo appearance, and I'm going to mention it anyway, but Wonder Woman appears. Yeah, Diane Prince, and played by Gail Godot. I'll leave it at that. Um, I'll say this, though. For the movie itself, it's decent. I would say it's it could be a time waster, but it's also fun at times and it does have some fabulous moments here and there and and the special effects are incredible here and there and I know it's a lot of that um, there were some funny moments too especially uh, with uh, Darla when <laughs> when she found out about the the unicorns uh, yeah there was a scene uh, in the movie you know during the destruction where the unic where she found some unicorns, which they're actually afraid of all these other creatures, which they're the ones that could stop those creatures around. That's their weakness. And um, yeah, I remember there was a part where she got some skittles and <laughs> and actually fed the the unicorns that was under the, the parking structure, and she says, "Taste the rainbow, bitch." <laughs> yeah, thought that was really funny. Um, and there's other moments here and there too um, that I can get to that, uh, especially you know the scene with Shazam and and Asperia, you know, trying to have an ordeal to have the negotiation while they're having some food and all that or even when they <laughs> when he tries to trap uh, Hesperia inside the Rock of Eternity <laughs> which unfortunately she escaped of course and so on um, and um, there are some other cameos uh, mostly during the post credit scene, which is basically, you know, the Justice, uh, there was going to be, of course, the, the Justice Society, as they call it, like they wanted Shazam to join in or something, yeah, okay. <clears throat> so, yes, I mean, basically, the, the whole dome scene is sort of borrowed from other movies, or, well, there was a show called Under the Dome, or even the Simpsons movie that had the idea. Um, but I'm just saying it for that matter. Uh, of course, the, the creatures, um, they got Cyclops, Harpies, Manticores, and Minotaurs, you know, like crossing around at the Citizen Bank Park, you know, walking around too. So that that's interesting to see those other <laughs> creatures. And there's other special effects here and there. Um, the cast was great. I would definitely say, um, Helen Mirren and Lucy Liu did a, did a great job playing the villains. I mean, at least that's what they're, at least they're exactly what they act. I mean, they almost act like sisters at times. I mean, Hesperia is the oldest one and the other one is just, well, I mean, yeah, because they all fight around like sisters and all that and, 
and they, they're the ones who want to take over here and there. I mean, that's that's exactly what they are. Technically, they are sisters. Um, and, yeah, it's not exactly as excellent as it should have been, but that's fine. Um, I still, uh, there, there could have been a lot of things that could have been better for the story. But it's what I expected. Um, and it's always nice to see Domin Hansu reprising his role as the wizard, trying to help them out here and there. And then so on and so forth. And then, and it's always, you know, you know, Shazam always, always the, the leader of the team trying to help them out despite the fact that they've been going through hard times. And I know because of the personal beliefs and everything happening around and they're trying to break away from this family or they were afraid that you know he's not going to stay there for so long but I know they're going to try to fix this problem some somehow some way and also having the also having Billy save uh, Freddy since he really cares for him so much and he didn't want this to happen to him since he's been bullied a lot and treated like, like garbage but it's nice that he had a girlfriend to join in even with even though she had her own secrets and she has her own powers and all that yeah <laughs> yeah um so yeah it has some nice photography from so yeah, it does have some nice cinematography by Gila Petros. It is edited uh, edited wisely here by Miguel uh, by Michelle Adler, and, and I know this the soundtrack and the score is done by Christoph Beck and all that. I mean, I, I do wish the film did so well when it came out. I mean, if it wasn't into a competition with other films that was coming out during the spring, well, that would have been the case. But nevertheless, I mean, I'm not so I'm not even so sure if they'll be able to make another. I'm not so sure they'll be able to make another sequel even after the film bombed. But who knows? I mean, they might do another one. If that's the case, maybe they'll make. Maybe they'll make some of their. Their money directly from from uh, Max and see how that would go. But but still, I mean, I think people should give this movie a chance. I think it's pretty underrated at this at this point on now because it does have its funny moments here and there, and I I did laugh. And I, I did love its moments too, where even in, in the dream sequence <laughs> that uh, Shazam was dreaming about Wonder Woman and that he wanted to fall in love with her too and all that, which was kind of awkward too where they show the scene with the wizard disguised as Wonder Woman <laughs> at, at a local restaurant. Yeah, that was crazy. Yeah, but it was real nice to see her again, I mean, after all this time. I still would rather watch this over the Batman and and uh, the Snyder Cut of of Justice League and and uh, the Suicide Squad that James Gunn did, because I know he's going to work for DC now, and so on. I would rather watch this movie over... Black Adam any day. You know, the one with The Rock, uh, Dwayne Johnson. That was a terrible one. And I, I wanted it to be good too, and I really did. But I could definitely watch this together with um, Wonder Woman 1984 right away, <laughs> which I also have on Blu ray. Yeah. Well, you get the idea. <laughs> so that's Shazam, Fury of the Gods. And I give the movie three and a half stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.